In this video, I would like to share you a very interesting principle. It's called separation of command and query principle. It's very easy to follow and implement principle, and it, but it is super powerful and can significantly change your overall design. So the content is arranged like this. So we will, firstly, we will talk about what is the principle um, and why we would like to use them. And then I will have a few uh, concurrent examples to demonstrate how to use that in your uh, in a React application. And uh, after that, I will talk about the benefit and the drawback of uh, this principle. And then we draw to the conclusion section. So to understand that, firstly, let's talk about command and query. What are they? So simply put, command a method that per perform action or uh, modify your uh, over the state in your application. It can be either adding some item to a list, or you know, uh, update the list, update the data a field, something like that. Uh, well, query on the other hand is retrieving that change uh, without modifying anything. So the separation of command and query is basically a, a simple uh, principle that suggests we need to um, split the methods or function into two categories. One is modifier, one is query, but we should never do both. Of course, there will be some exceptions, but um, this is generally the um, what the principle suggests. So for example, if we have a function, let's say this green box is a, is a function, it has a few different responsibilities, uh, as you can see in the in the diagram. So the uh, origin part is, you know, modifying or um, changing the data in some way, and the green one is retrieving the data or return the value of the data into a color place. Well, this uh, what the um, principle suggests is we should split the function into two functions. Uh, well, the reader is only do the read, um, reading, sorry. <clears throat> well, the modifier or command is responsible purely on change the data without return anything. On the other hand, the green one, which is a query, will return um, the modified data, right? So this is basically the, the splitting. The reason behind that is normally there is imbalanced um, query uh, that's imbalanced amount of requests sent to this function or calling this function. So normally uh, it's not equal amount of the request sent to the reading and writing. Uh, sometimes it's like more reading than writing um, or vice versa. And uh, this is basically the idea of split, uh, the separation of command and query. And uh, as many, um, you know, fundamental principle, this uh, principle can be applied in different levels in your uh, software. So in, in here, we are talking about like uh, functions, modules, and it actually can be applied in much more larger scale. For example, if, uh, if you have a um, web application, let's say Twitter or some, or Facebook, uh, normally uh, the reading and the write, writing is not exactly the same, you know, people read more than writing basically. And uh, there will be some like a database master or like a main database that um, responds for, you know, handling all the writing uh, requests. Well, there are many replicas about that database to handling the query because there are many more queries than writing. So they will have more um, database for reading. So that in that scale, we can split the uh, the application into two categories. One is handling the you know writing and another uh, for query. Um, so uh, yeah, it just, uh, it's just it's it's just another example of how do you handle how do you split your uh, application, make them more responsible. So that kind of explain why we would, would like to use this uh, splitting. To be more clear, it provides you more like a clarity. Your code becomes more, much more easy to read and understand. There's no side effect uh, when you call a query, and it promotes more uh, modularity. 
um, and your code is more likely to be used in many places. Uh, so for example, if you called add or you know update something, you're not worrying about it will retain anything or like uh, vice versa. And uh, it's normally introduce more testability. Uh, in many cases, uh, your like <coughs> in many cases, the code is not really testable because it has side effects. So with this split, you can you can achieve more testability. And also because that uh, split your your each piece after that split will be more tends to be more readable and uh, maintainable. Basically, that's what it, the principle is. And uh, let's talk about some concrete examples. So let's say we have a shopping cart application. Um, it's basically you can add items to the, to a cart, or you know have multiple items, or you can remove that from your cart, and then. Uh, whenever you add a new item or remove a, an existing item, the number, the total number will uh, be recalculated, and uh, then you know people can check out to the to the final page. And uh, in the code, you probably will have something like a shopping cart. Um, you know, in the add items, uh, every time you push item, you need to update the total price, and then return the. Uh, the the price to the color place. Uh, similar similar, and the same thing for the remove item. Well, for the update total price, you will reduce all the items and uh, calculate all the price, sum them together. This is the before the separation. When you call the add item, apart from the actually adding, you are returning the total price after the calculation. This is a very good example of where we should apply this um, principle. So after the refactoring or change, we kind of split the add, remove, this kind of command or modifier from the reader or reading. So add is add item is only pushing item to the list. Remove, on the other hand, is removing that item from the list. Well, there's a query uh, implement. In TypeScript, it's a it's a getter. Um, you can see that we, it it will manipulate the it will do the accurate calculation and the return uh, the total price of all the items. So back to the Re React application, you probably have already used some kind of state management uh, library. Uh, for example, if you use Redux. <coughs> um, for example, if you're using Redux. You have already doing the um, command or action and the reducer splitting. So you have actions that are triggered from the UI that will modify the data in some way. And then you have selectors that will pick up the particular um, part of the uh, data from the tree. And that's uh, another concrete example of how you would split the uh, command and query. So we have already talked about the benefit of doing that and how we do that, but we what's the drawback of this principle? Just like any other principles, it feeds to many cases and it can solve a lot of problems, but it's not the universal you know, principle that can apply everywhere. So the main drawback of uh, the separation of command and query will be, it's kind of difficult to, to debugging when you have many uh, actions or commands. Let's use Redux as an example again. So you, you might have already seen this kind of huge reducer. It has so many branches, maybe the reducer is separate in different modules. And uh, it's kind of difficult to track which action triggered uh, which reducer. And uh, especially when the, when the application grows too big and uh, because it's not in a single place uh, you know we have already split them into two different types or we have already split them into two different modules um, it's it's easy to lose track but i guess you can fix that problem by uh, introducing more you know code standard or like if you need to making sure everyone in the team understand the the module where where to put the uh, different uh, things you have to like review more often and making sure that um, the code is in the right place. 
Well, having that said, uh, the separation, it tends to make your code more, you know, readable, more modulized and uh, easy to understand. And, and the most beautiful part of this principle that I like the most is it provides you the flexibility uh, of like how often you can call the writing or query. Um, and it gives you that flexibility. And also I like the fact that it can be applied in many different levels. Uh, in, you know, in coding, your in, in uh, uh, even how you organize the module of your um, or a package of your um, artifacts, and uh, also in an architecture level, you can split or scale your application into different category, which can resolve the uh, you know scale problem of your application if it's growing uh, too far too big, and that's it. Thanks for watching. Making sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and I will see you next time.